Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of On Topic. I'm John Testa, and I'm here today in a very historic place, obviously, the Peekskill Museum here in Peekskill on Union Avenue. And I'm joined by two special guests. To my right is John Curran, who is the City of Peekskill historian and a trustee here at the museum. Has done a lot to promote the museum and bring it back to where it is today. And to my left, we have Lorman Augustowski, who is the pres president president of the museum, of the board, and has done tremendous work here over the last number of years in uh, restore, helping to uh, get the funds to restore the museum, as well as promoting the museum and having uh, exhibits here that uh, have really brought people to, to uh, the city of Peekskill. So I want to thank both of you for being here today. Thank you, John. Call Augie as uh, affectionately known. Um, and uh, the topic of our, our discussion today is a very important topic, I feel, something that has been close to my heart for many years, and that is uh, the history of a, a very special man, Chauncey Depew, Chauncey M. Depew to be exact. Uh, Chauncey Depew is a longtime historical figure here in the city of Peekskill, and many people uh, may not realize that who are new to the city or who have not really uh, learned about Depew in school. And I think it's important, and the two gentlemen here with me today think it's important that we present this information to you. And they think it's so important that they've actually uh, started to put together an exhibit uh, on Chauncey Depew. And I'm going to start with you, uh, Augie, to just tell us why you decided to do this uh, exhibit here at the Peekskill Museum. Well, as you mentioned, uh, most of the people who live in Peekskill, even if they've been born here, may not be familiar with the life and times of Chauncey Depew. He was a significant person in our history. Uh, he was a very brilliant uh, young man. He went to the Peekskill Academy, of which I'm very proud. Uh, spent 12 years there. And uh, with his ambition, his intelligence, and his self-confidence, he went on to be a very successful political leader, as well as an industrialist uh, with the uh, railroad. So uh, it's someone in the history of Peekskill that I think uh, more people should be uh, uh, aware of and uh, know some of the accomplishments that he uh, he uh, did and also uh, to be familiar with some of the uh, the property that is named after him here in the city. A very good point and uh, as you say the Peekskill Academy that's the Peekskill Military Academy yeah. which is presently uh, was which was where the uh, present high school is Peekskill High School is uh, the only building remaining from that academy is the administration building on Elm Street unfortunately uh, the rest of it was torn down. Uh, I think that'll be a subject of a future show. Uh, I can tell. Yes, it's very important as well. But Chauncey Depew went there for 12 years, as you say, and he uh, continued as a trustee there. And as you mentioned also, uh, quite a number of things in Peekskill are uh, named in his honor. That's correct. Uh, and formerly, what is now the, the athletic field known as Torpy Field, that was property that was donated to the Peekskill Military Academy by Chauncey for use as an athletic facility. As well as the Pew Park, over 200 acres also donated to the city of Peekskill, uh, which bears his name. And I'm going to move over to John Curran, who's the city historian. All of the reasons why Chauncey is uh, or should be uh, regarded here in the city of Peekskill. Uh, primarily because Mr. Depew was a national figure and he had so many uh, important contacts throughout the whole era from the end of the Civil War up to uh, past uh, Teddy Roosevelt. And if you read his autobiography, uh, you really get a good sense of how involved uh, this Peekskill uh, person was in, in the, really the, the nation's uh, growth and change through that very important uh, time of American history. Now you mentioned his biography. Um which is also a very uh, important source of information. And, and he talks a lot about the different phases of his life and his early phases growing up in Peekskill from a Huguenot family, staunch Democrats. He ended up being one of the initial uh, um, proponents of the Republican Party. That's true. Uh, the, the, the first organization were called the Wide Awakes. The Wide Awakes were those who were discontent with things as they were, the, way, the, the, the growing crisis in the country. Uh, you know, essentially having to do with slavery and so on. And uh, as the Republican uh, Party uh, was formed, Chauncey was right there in the very beginning. You might even say he was one of the, the, the formative figures that really developed the, the party, which was quite radical at that time, by the way. While we're on this topic, obviously, uh, uh, Mr. Depew was one of the uh, principal uh, political and uh, national supporters of Abraham Lincoln 
from the very beginning. And it's, uh, 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 Chauncey Depew was present during the, uh, the train stop in 1861 here in Peekskill on February 19th as uh, uh, Lincoln, President-elect Lincoln was traveling from Springfield, Illinois down to Washington, D.C. for his inauguration, which at that time took place in the early springtime in March. Uh, there was a uh, great uh, ceremonies were held, uh, you know, as the train went along the route, and Peekskill was one of those locations, and the Lincoln Society in Peekskill still uh, commemorates that event, as you well know, being a past president of the society, and this year, uh, being the president myself, I feel it's important to remind people that uh, these were important times and that we here in Pinksco were part of these big events. It leads into uh, the other, uh, one of the main uh, things that Chauncey was known for, and that was as an orator, not just after dinner speaker, of which apparently he gave 8,000 different uh, addresses and talks to various organizations. But in my own uh, limited study so far on this topic, because hopefully it's, we're going to continue doing this for a couple of months, I had to answer my own question, is why uh, Senator Depew was as popular as he was. In, in putting together the material here in, in the Peekskill Museum, there's constant renditions of him, either in a drawing, a watercolor, a painting, photograph, constantly over and over again. Uh, the public want to see what he looks like. And why is that? I keep asking myself. Why was he as popular? Here, here he is on the cover of Time magazine. And this is, as you, you have so many different uh, uh, pieces of evidence here relating to how important he was. And what I found was that, as best I can express it right now, he was, he was, he was um, expressing the optimism of this nation in the late 1800s of, of what was all coming together with the great inventions of you know the railroad and the steamboats and the electric lights and the automobile was just beginning and all that. He saw that as the natural evolutionary progress of American civilization which represented the culmination of all previous civilizations in the world. That's an astounding thing to say and that he actually did that and represented that is well documented for example when he opened the Chicago World's Fair in 1893 which was the really pinnacle of all the new inventions in the world at that time. I think this is a good segue into how the country came to know him. And Peekskill, obviously, growing up here and having his, as he mentions again in his biography, how Peekskill was only uh, two to 3,000 residents as, as he was growing up. Everybody knew everybody. He came back, opened up uh, his own law office here once he passed the bar. And his father was a uh, into... Um, Car going through uh, the, the river, he was very involved with uh, commerce, very involved with farming, and all this background really played into Chauncey's uh, formative years. His mother was a staunch uh, a Calvinist, as he explained, and she, uh, right up to the day she passed, uh, was a very important part of Chauncey's life. So again, uh, the land that is here, uh, let's discuss exactly where that is. Well, we can start with Depew Park, a major piece of property that was donated and uh, developed to uh, a beautiful facility for the citizens of Peekskill. Uh, Lake Mitchell, of course, was named after uh, his mother. That was his mother's maiden name. So that is uh, still there. Uh, his statue still stands. Uh, the park is in need of some uh, repair right now, but uh, it is a very beautiful piece of property. To, and to imagine that this one individual had enough uh, feelings for the city of Peekskill to donate that property. Uh, the athletic field that was uh, donated to Peekskill Military Academy has just recently been redone and is a facility used by the high school, a uh, very nice piece of property. Uh, his home still uh, stands here in Peekskill and is, uh, it went through a bit of a fire last year but uh, is being re rebuilt and uh, continues to be maintained as a historic site uh, in the city. So as we discuss all these important aspects of the city of Peekskill, which is obviously why uh, we are so interested in Chauncey Depew, um, the rest of the country got to know him and got to love him, and, and he became one of the well-known or best-known uh, political figures uh, in, in the country at the time. And uh, just to show where at the end of, of that career, uh, 1888, uh, he was, Chauncey Depew was a uh, candidate for president. This is an amazing artifact. This is a ribbon that says uh, Chauncey Depew for uh, U.S. President 1888. And he did receive all of the votes of the New York delegation at that convention, by the way. Uh, 
But, he, but essentially, Mr. DePew uh, nominates, uh, you know, physically nominates uh, verbally uh, President Harrison, and Harrison is elected that year. Chauncey is a behind the scenes player in almost all presidential politics, all the way from Lincoln, all the way through uh, Theodore Roosevelt. And he was a delegate to all those conventions, and um, we just saw where what was the culmination of such a career. Let's go back to how it all began. Uh, he first uh, got into politics in, in what capacity? Well, I think through his lawyer, lawyer days. Uh, obviously, William Nelson was well connected, had been a congressman and a, and a colleague with uh, Lincoln in the 1840s. And also, Mr. Wells had some uh, important contacts as well. And then, um, and through his uh, other associations in, in uh, New York State, he becomes elected assemblyman, I believe, in 1861. And then soon after, becomes the Secretary of State for, for New York. And it's in that capacity that he handles the, uh, the funeral train uh, for the, the assassinated uh, President Lincoln. Also important to point out, um, while he was Secretary of State for New York, uh, President Lincoln was going for his reelection campaign. Uh, when all thought that he shouldn't even run. Many thought that he shouldn't even run. Uh, he was very unpopular. The war was very unpopular. Being a Republican was very unpopular. And, um, but they were backers of Mr. Lincoln at the time. Uh, you, you had his cabinet were kind of torn, even though uh, uh, publicly they seemed, except for Mr. Chase, was on his side. Uh, Mr. Seward, obviously, his, his Secretary of State, was very much on his side. But... Um, a very tough election ensued, and Chauncey played a very big part in that. And as you know, the election of 1864 was one of the most uh, bitter elections in American history. And it was all those things that you just said about that election. And New York State was really on the brink of which way it was going to go, with the, with the re Republican Lincoln or with the Democrat uh, McClellan, the former general. Right. It'd be sort of like Colin Powell running against him, you know, in a contemporary sense. Right. It was that dramatic. So Mr. DePew. Uh, goes down to Washington, D.C. to see if he can get the soldiers of New York State, which were over 100,000 at that time, to, to 300,000. Well, I'm glad you corrected me on that. That shows the tremendous participation of New York in, in that tragic war. Uh, where they were located, what camps and so on, so that they could get ballots and, and vote in the national election. Secretary of War Stanton what, had nothing to do with it. He thought it was secret war information and wouldn't give it to him. Eventually what happens, he, uh, Mr. DePew uh, is, uh, has an interview with uh, President Lincoln inside the White House, and it's well uh, recounted in his autobiography. The point being that this does happen, and New York uh, carries uh, the state, I believe, by like 7,000 votes for Lincoln. And it's all due to this one man from Peekskill. And talk about, we started talking about how important he was in national events, and this is just another perfect example of that. This was the real turning point for the Lincoln re-election campaign, and people didn't even realize what was going on for the most part. Well, let's not overlook, uh, you know, that, that uh, Mr. DePew uh, runs for the U.S. Senate and is elected twice uh, in 1889 and then uh, 1911, and so he serves... Uh, uh, two terms altogether of six years. And you have an amazing artifact here. I shouldn't even be handling it yeah, like this. It's not. It's, it's, greatest of shape it's, it's a banner. I've ever seen. And it's, maybe you can talk about it. Yes, this is, uh, we've, we've all seen these over the years, some colleges and campaigns back in, in this period of time. Obviously, uh, there were very few ways of getting information out, and one of them was through banners. And this is a felt banner uh, for Senator Chauncey Depew. I don't know exactly when this was given out or if it was given out as part of a, a campaign uh, a memento or something he gave out. I'm assuming it was through a campaign, uh, uh, but it's it's the only one I've ever seen. I've and never seen it before, and I think it's, it's just amazing. It's on its last legs, but it, it is a piece of history, as well as the ribbon for him being the presidential uh, nominee at the time. Um, well, we should also mention some of the other little trinkets. There's the little uh, spoon, commemorative baby spoon, Chauncey, and, and things like that. A very large segment uh, for many, many years of Chauncey DePew's life was, was connected with commerce and specifically uh, the railroad, um, the New York Central Railroad through the Vanderbilt family who we had mentioned earlier and how uh, his father's connections through that kind of brought him into that um, area. Yes, we tend to also uh, forget that uh, Chauncey DePew was one of the primary business 
uh, people of the late 1800s. As president of the New York Central Railroad, which is one of the dominant lines in the country and really of, of the entire world at that time. And that really uh, epitomizes the extent of his power, both in, in the business world, in politics, and also in the social life of the country. He becomes a, a star, essentially, you know, a figure of uh, admiration for the, for the popular people of this country. And that's where he basically gained his wealth through his connection with the railroad company and his, his rise through the ranks there to eventually become president for many years. And um, uh, at the time, as we all know, as the, as the shipping industry started to decline to a degree, the railroad industry took over, and that was the main source of transportation as well as freight, uh, getting goods and services from one place to another. So uh, he was a very big part of that, and uh, the new uh, Grand Central Station, exactly, the Puny, the Puny New York, once you mention that. Side, uh, since uh, the New York Central was, was the dominant line, essentially it had connections from, from New England all the, all the way into, uh, through Chicago and out into uh, Nebraska. And uh, they needed certain uh, what they call hubs, in other words, where they could uh, uh, centralize the, the locomotives and clean them and get the thing going and so on mechanically. And, and the Pew uh, organizes this, this location outside the city of Buffalo. And it's still there, and it's called the Pew, New York. Again, there's an amazing uh, legacy that the Pew has. But all the things named after him here and well-deserved and uh, his connection to Peekskill, he, he has a whole city in western New York named after him, which is significant. Um, I have a, a, a theory of my own that I cannot prove, but I just happen to just have this feeling about it. And sometimes you, those things happen when you study history. But as we have talked earlier and as we know about the Lincoln Depot, as it's called, and the, the original depot in the, in the city of Peekskill, in many cities, most of, the, most of those original depots were, were eliminated, were torn down, something else was put in its place uh, as the new freight or as the new uh, uh, stations were built, which was in Peekskill, the, the freight uh, station was abandoned, and eventually in 1880s, a new uh, railroad station was built there on Railroad Avenue, um, and over time, that building remained, and it's my personal theory that the reason it was not eliminated by the New York Central Railroad is because of Chauncey Depew and his connection with the Lincoln no, and in Peekskill. That's, that, that's, I never thought about that, that is my personal uh, 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 gut feeling about why that was never destroyed. Well, this is becoming an historic uh, <laughs> program as well. That, that may well be true, and I, I never thought of those associations, but that could very well be. Well, hopefully someday we can find that evidence. So we've been talking about uh, Chauncey Depew's uh, prominence, rise to prominence on the national level, his ability to speak, his ability to command an audience, his knowledge of different things, and his, um, his real influence in, in, in uh, what historically took place during that period. But there was one very historic uh, moment um, that he was chosen to be a part of, and that was the dedication of uh, the Statue of Liberty. Of all the people in the United States, the Peekskill man, Chauncey M. Depew, is the main orator at the dedication of the statue called Liberty Enlightening the World, the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor. It takes place in 1886. It's not ready in time for the, for the true uh, centennial of 1876. But in 1876, there's Mr. Depew delivering this great oration to all the, to the president and all the dignitaries and the people from France, essentially saying that this country represents the liberty which will enlighten the rest of the world, which is just an amazing uh, newsworthy event. But from the unseen and the unknown, two great souls have come to participate in this celebration. The faith in which they died fulfilled, the cause for which they battled triumphant, the people they loved in the full enjoyment of the life for which they labored and fought and suffered, the spirit voices of Washington and Lafayette join in the glad acclaim of France and the United States to liberty enlightening the world. Other important events that uh, Mr. Depew was uh, a part of, and the first one uh, was the um, Grant's Tomb uh, dedication. 
Obviously, uh, General Grant uh, was essentially the, the man that led the military victory in the Civil War. And again, of all the people in the country, Chauncey Depew was there, invited to deliver the keynote address at that very important monument in uh, Manhattan. That was a very exceptional uh, event for him to be a part of, as well as something that most people don't know about. Um, we all know about President McKinley at the turn of the 20th century, was running for re-election, his vice presidential uh, um, uh, running mate was Theodore Roosevelt at the time, a prominent New Yorker who was well known, family well known with the Depew family, as uh, his father as well. And um, uh, a very tragic incident happened that Mr. Depew ended up being uh, uh, part of. Well, at the, uh, the Panama World Fair, uh, uh, President McKinley is shaking hands with the various people in the crowd. And one man takes his hand as he's taking the one hand, uh, he has a weapon in the other, and it's a revolver, and he shoots uh, President McKinley in, in the stomach twice. It's tragic. It's awful. And uh, the whole country is stunned. We have a newspaper article, the front page here in Peekskill, that says uh, President McKinley shot, isn't expected to live, and so on. Uh, the, the, the connection here with uh, Mr. Depew... This happened in Buffalo, New York. ...is that he receives a telegram right away because he's an important person. And uh, Depew immediately is on the scene, and he becomes a witness to the... To the, inaug to the uh, what do you call it? To the, uh, to the swearing in of, uh, of then President McKinley. And he's a witness to, to that event. Let's spend our remaining time um, just looking at some of the memorabilia here, pointing out some of these things we've been talking about. Uh, again, people can come to the Peekskill Museum to see them in person. Uh, many of them, uh, uh, the books of Chauncey Depew, which there are many, can be read through the library. I'm sure, online, but um, let's start with uh, some of his um, portraits. He has many, many portraits, one of probably of the time, have, having quite a number of, throughout his whole uh, adult life, uh, a series of portraits. So let's look at some of those. This is a perfect place to start, John, in front of this uh, um, three framed, uh, three uh, matted uh, portraits of Chauncey in three uh, specific times of his life. and. Before we get into it, we can see here his office is toward the end of his life. We don't know the exact year, but it's got to be in the early 1900s. And you can see in his study the actual uh, portraits we see here. Was, so this came directly out of Chauncey's painting. Well, obviously, you can see here, we can begin. Uh, here it says 1856. He graduates from Yale University. John T. M. Depew, Secretary of State of New York in 1865, and then the U.S. Senate in 1900. And uh, this is something, obviously, he valued. We have all kinds of graphics. And this is an extremely well-detailed watercolor uh, rendition of Chauncey Depew's uh, birthplace, essentially. 1834, he's born here in Peekskill on Main Street. And this is the house that you had described earlier, uh, just down from City Hall on Main Street. And if we come down this way a little bit more, this is an amazing archive. This is a letter. Uh, from the Secretary of State of the United States, signed at that time by William Seward, appointing Chauncey Depew the first ever ambassador to the country of Japan, which had just been previously been opened to the world uh, by the Admiral Perry. And um, Depew instead decides to work uh, with Vanderbilt and the New York Central Railroad as, as its lead attorney. And the date on this is 1865. And so this is again part of the whole Depew story. We have here a uh, very nice uh, photo of um, Chauncey, Dep Chauncey Mitchell Depew, as it's put on his uh, on the stone here, uh, a statue of Chauncey in Depew Park. The statue makes national news in 1918, and it's featured in a newsreel clip that was played in the movie theaters at that time. Great orator, lecturer, lawyer, and statesman, Chauncey M. Depew is one of the few men who live to see themselves immortalized in bronze. The entire populace of his hometown, Peekskill, New York, turns out to see and hear the aging former senator as this memorial to his greatness is unveiled. I noticed, John, you have a great photo here of the Depew Opera House that was in downtown Peekskill. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Depew Opera House is, a, as you can well see, a uh, distinguished building. Of, uh, of, of majestic architecture. And it's paid for in large part and dedicated to and dedicated by 
Chauncey Depew. It sat on South Street, became a landmark. As a matter of fact, when the international automobile races took place in the early 1900s, this is one of the places that they stopped at. Unfortunately, there was a fire and it was destroyed later on, but we do know that the John Philip Sousa Band performed there in this majestic building in 1898 and performed his newly composed Stars and Stripes Forever, if you can imagine that. Sitting there in that auditorium, John Philip Sousa is on the stage playing this new work, which becomes an American classic. And this is located on South Street, and what, what's there now? Well, it was there. Right now, you see the, uh, the Art Loft Studio buildings can collect various parts of history, including uh, Peekskill history, and John Testa has been quite enthusiastic in collecting some pieces having to do with Chauncey Depew. I was amazed to see these myself. I believe many of them are one of a kind, and I want him to show and talk briefly about some of these items here. I mentioned earlier that Chauncey was a, a well-known figure and very well, much sought after for his likeness and his endorsements, uh, and you can see here, here are a number of endorsements uh, that he was a part of, not, a, not the only ones he was a part of. Uh, here, just a, a pointer from Chauncey Depew about uh, studying law at home, and this is for a company that provided uh, correspondence courses at home for law. Another one uh, for our Chauncey Souvenir Spoon, which many people purchased uh, in the local jewelers here in Peekskill. Uh, you also have Chauncey here uh, advertising Johan Moff's Malt Extract. Uh, another uh, ad here for Chauncey Depew um, for the malt extract, a different uh, version of that ad. Yeah, this is an amazing <laughs> sequence of advertisements. Again, endorsements showing that Depew is a celebrity and that his picture and his name mean something. He became a very wealthy man through uh, his connection with the railroad, through his salary, obviously, but also through many of his endorsements. And here is a, a great uh, souvenir that was given out at the time. Uh, Orators were part of dinners. They would have uh, them as the advertisement to come to the dinner to hear this orator uh, who would go on for in Chauncey's uh, time, uh, an hour, sometimes two hours long. Uh, they would smoke cigars, sit around and listen to him speak, and you would walk away with a memento of the mm -hmm. evening. And here is one that is uh, an after dinner uh, event that took place in New York City. Well, I hope you have a better understanding and appreciation of Chauncey Depew and his, his life, his connections to Peekskill, his influence in uh, national uh, uh, history and our development over the years. And uh, you can understand, I think, now why uh, people like me and, and uh, John Curran, our city historian, and Lorman Augustowski from the Peekskill Museum, why we care so much about the history of uh, Mr. Depew and why we want to make sure that people here in, in our region and throughout the country, actually, who watch this show uh, understand and, and learn something about one of our, uh, I think, sometimes uh, forgotten heroes and, and our, one of our forgotten uh, uh, real makers and shakers of the turn of the century, the Civil War era, right up until the 1920s. So uh, Mr. Depew, uh, again, is someone we should really thank for what we have here in the city of Peekskill, uh, the development of the country, and also uh, a little bit of uh, why we are who we are today. So thank you for being with us. I want to thank my guest, John Curran, the city historian, Lorman Augustowski from the Peekskill Museum. And again, uh, we hope you join us on our next show, and we'll see you then. Thank you.